On this video, we're going to work on folds. They're all going to come down the left side. Uh, we're going to start with a natural hand hold. This is probably the most common fold. So let's bring Kerry in. And what we'll need to do is uh, get Kerry to separate and do the ladies' footwork after we demonstrate it. And one prep, two, three, and four, five, and six. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. All right, just a couple of little things. I can show you many different ways to lead this. Matter of fact, I'll just do it this way. If I was to put the hand to the middle of the back, I feel like that's a good way to lead it. Um, and not wrong, and not necessarily more right than anything else. And then lowering the hand. For me, I just like to do it where I drop the hand and then let the girl take the length she wants and then I match that when I step in on the four count and then all I have to do is flip the pancake back into connection. So what I really like is that you separated that out because I feel like the long arm or the low arm where gravity just takes it down and she said I was able to take the length is actually something that inspires me to go slightly longer. Um, I do love the, the hammerlock at the back. Um, may I step on the other side? But as you see, it can shorten my distance. So the, the leader can keep me nice and close because at this point in time, it's not gonna feel very comfortable for me to walk away from that as much as it would be to stay close and unwind from there. So it's definitely something that the leader can use as a tool to um, control length. Yeah, and I'll talk about that hammerlock actually. If I want to go into hammerlock, the hand has to go down first before it can go up and under. So please, if you're going to lead the um, fold as a hammerlock, then please make sure the hand goes down and then around, and then that way it's not um, sweeping the girl's shoulder. But if I like to shoulder. get give to the leaders is if you fully extend your arm, it's probably going to fully extend hers. Of course, that depends on height difference. Yeah. That would be if you were equal height or shorter. Um, you might have to work a little bit harder if the follow is taller. But as you go ahead and do it and lengthen your own arm, then her arm automatically yeah. lengthens. Yeah, and sometimes. So the girls, sorry, but sometimes the girls will bring that hand up into hand a lot more naturally because they like it. But I don't pull on the arm, I'm not pushing on it, I'm just creating rotation. If we demonstrate the uh, long arm really quick, just to show the difference. One, two, three, and you four. You can see I, fl I can float easier away from that and, and lengthen the slot. Look at her body position, because you do not have to be this square. It actually looks more interesting when you're on a slight angle here. Plus looks a little nicer. Keep each other and then I side the side. Yeah. And then I step in where I feel the length is most comfortable that's not pulling on the girl. And just on that note, if I were to do a hammerlock and make connection to the back one, two, three, and four, I'm probably looking for some type of different exit. Yeah, where I want to connect faster, or I want to shoot out, or I want to add some styling. And accelerate that and make it real sharp, staccato, yeah. percussive. But either way it works, and, and folds are heaps of fun because you can add so many rhythm variations and styling at the end of the track, which you will see in future now, videos. Now you wanted me to talk about the follows footwork? Oh, please. So we're going into a traditional left side pass here and feeling as if we're doing a free spin. So if I'm going to use that pivot turn as my base turn there, that's what it would feel like. Coming though into the fact that it's a folds, there's this moment where we are release down the slot rather than continuing our turn. And so we want to go ahead and take that step. I'm making it rather large right now so that you can see it on video. But it's that our core is moving forward and whether the hand is at hammerlock or lengthened just with gravity, then we feel that deepening of the tone. I don't let myself go all the way out and clothesline myself, but I do connect at a deeper position so that I can feel when my leader is going to exit or how fast accelerated or decelerated the rotation is going to be. Yeah, and that's a good point. So if I put Kerry back in that position for a second. Three and the, four. She really has transferred the weight to that right foot. I'm committed. So if you feel the guy is creating rotation early, which he is allowed to do, hopefully in the basic form he's waiting for the correct timing to open up. But 
then all you need to do is swivel that body because you have the separation of that right foot not being on the floor, but just the toe, you can collect as you rotate and protect that upper body. So we can show that? Yeah, um, let's do that because we only need to show that once. Uh, on this side, sorry. <laughs> and one, two, three, and four, and then five and six. So you can see Kerry just releases or draws that foot in and gets set. So set that rotation. It's okay if you're a little early because you can always wait there on that five. Yeah. All right, good. So, um, this is one of my favorite moves, more because I can do so many things off of this move. Yo, yo. Yo, bro. <laughs> so if I lead a yo-yo, I'm doing it right to left. So I'm reversing the natural handhold. One down the track, press two in, three and four, out, five and six. And I love this as a teaching move because I don't want the girl to anticipate. One, two, three and four, five and six. I want her to wait and see, am I leading a six count or an extended pattern? So for the six count? Yeah, this is for the six count. One, two, wrap, three and four, five and six. So the really important thing for me here, as opposed to the fold, fold I'm waiting to step across on my four, I'm actually going down the track this time with the girl. One, two, down, three and four, anchor five and six. So I'm actually going down the track with the girl, she's wrapping into cuddle position, and then my body as it moves actually sends her away through the connection. And because I am looking to fill the space as a follow, oh, oh, thank you, uh, I feel that it's not going to wind Jesus. up again, and I'm not cool. bouncing myself back. That slow and unwinding rotation we've talked about in some of our other films here, um, is what comes into play, so I'm not anticipating. One, two, two three, three, and, and four, four, five, and, and six. six. I'd also like to talk about the fact that if we were talking in the fold, when we were doing the fold before, about committing down the slot on that four, it's the same thing here on the yo-yo, you might notice from this position. One, two, I'm continuing down the slot on four. He's going with me. Because I'm moving her down the track by stepping with her, and then away from her to get that anchor. Yeah, so just remember that when I lead the girl on a basic fold, I'm going down the track one, two, three, and is roughly staying where it is. Four steps back in the track, wherever that space is allowed, sometimes even down the track behind the girl, as opposed to this movement, one, two, three, and four. I'm actually going down the track, and then five and six. Do we want to talk about the repetitive yo-yo? Yes. Okay. All right, so if I want to extend out any of these fold type movements or wrapping movements, I'm going to have to let the girl know one, two, three, and four, away, five, and six, seven, and eight, and the one, and two. So you can see that became a 10 count movement. So in other words, the leader doesn't allow me as the follow to anchor at the end of the first what he's actually doing is he's asking me almost to rock and go or to step forward before an anchor might take place in a normal six count. Yeah, round. and it's really important that we don't pull on the girl here, but we physically lead it down the track. Oh, I went to go the wrong <laughs> side then. And one, two, go with the girl, go away from the girl, go with the girl, and then anchor. And that's exactly like we do in the whip. We redirect her before she is able to yeah. anchor. It's a basically a whip type action, I guess. Um, my footwork, just so the guys know, I'm leading one, two, three, and four. And then I, as I unwind, five and six, seven and eight, and go one and two. So I'll show that with Kerry one more time. One two, three, and four, away, down, anchor. So, follows, this is very much like the uh, fold at the very beginning. One, two, three, and four. At this point in time- She feels the unwind here. We don't know if we're gonna be unwinding to anchor or unwinding to do a redirect. I'm going to do the multiple. So, past the anchor, triple, he leads us back down the slot, and we wind up again at the very end, 
he'll unwind us in the Laos to anchor. So I'll count through that. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. I did almost a little coaster or a... Um, rocking bell. Thank you. Rocking bell. Seven, and eight. One, and two. And if I, I like to count this in a couple of different ways, so that became a 10 count, and we let it as eight through the first movement, so your ankle was actually finishing on a start of a new eight count. If I count it in pattern count, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, three, and four, five, and six. So I'm basically repeating my three and four, or three and four, three and four, three and four. And if when you, want. you start to add more to it and repeat more and more, that's very helpful, especially if you are uh, doing a tonic musically, tonic to the resolve. So if you did more than two, one, one two, two, three, and four, five, and six, three, and four, five, and six, three, and four, five, and six. That's just counting six counts, six counts. Yeah, so it's good to practice counting in those ways, and then you can finish this in many different ways. I could be like one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, one, and two, three, and four, anchor five, and six. So play around with it a little bit and do it to different lengths so you get used to it. And this again is another gateway move, it's really good for connection, timing, direction, both from the lead and follow, doing it as a six a 10 or even more extended pattern. Um, and then it leads you into doing, again, really, really difficult high level movements that we do in the dance. I love the last one that you did that exited in a free spin. It allows me to musically interpret and for us to really have some solo time. Um, but also I just want to point out that in that last one that Shane counted musically. Yeah, enjoy.